education. I never made it to university. I've had to teach myself. Ah, uh, you've got to be here somewhere. I'm showing you. You're the first uh, footprints. There's only one word for you, I suppose. I'm a genius. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Anyway, let's do this to you. Oh. Hello, I'm Rex Gilroy, the Yowie Man. I'm almost 70 years old, and I've been researching the Yowie for the last... Uh, <laughs> I've been doing this research into the Yowie for some 56 years now. In China, of course, they call them the Yowie and their Yowie Masties in Russia. In North America, the Bigfoot. And in New Zealand, they have the Moiho. But they all mean basically the same thing. Wild men or wild hairy people or, or hairy people or hairy men, hairy women. Sina said it was just a mythical creature like the Bunyip. Of course, we've uh, gone out looking for the so-called myths and we found the evidence. I went out here into the Blue Mountain scrubland and I started to find things. My collection is priceless. I must be the only researcher in Australia who's got fossil human skulls and the dining room table. I have fossils from every geological period of the Earth's history and I now have the largest privately owned natural science collection in Australia. Yes. Over the years we have amassed a huge collection so much so that we're virtually living in a pocket of our home and the rest of it's the collection whether it be books or whether it's rocks and other artifacts and things like that. So, advanced space lady. I'm at the stage where I've got to find room for them. With Rex's theories, I've always supported him, and in actual fact, I'm probably his biggest um, skeptic because I'm asked questions how do you know that, and why do you think that's an artifact, and that sort of thing. And he then explains it to me. Yes, Heather is very important to my research and my life just generally. We're soul but the brothers, you can say. We're a team. Some people call us Mr. and Mrs. Yowie or Mr. and Mrs. Indiana Jones. I do have an Indiana Jones hat and uh, you know, I wear that whenever I'm in the bush. <laughs> Might as well guess the part. I was interested in History, historical stuff, but no, I'd never, probably never even heard of a Yowie before I met Rex. It hasn't been easy. Uh, we didn't know what the problem was at the time, but, but now that we know that it's Asperger's. That's stupid. <laughs> and I'm the one with the feet on the ground. I'm the one, the practical person. I'm the one that does the cooking, the cleaning. The, Everything else. Oh, what have I done? Oh, <laughs> Throughout the world, there's vast areas of land that man can't get into. In such regions, any animal unknown to science could quite easily survive without us knowing. The scientist has said to me once, it's impossible. Uh, that's a word found in the dictionary of fools as far as I'm concerned. But I need physical proof. I need tissue. I need a freshly dead corpse or raw hair samples or a, a skeleton, a skull. Something physical that a biologist can work with. And that's what I'm searching for. Something in there. Could be the alley. <laughs> so far, there is not one authentic still photo of a Yowie. For some reason, they don't trust me, and I don't blame them. The well, results of a lifetime of dedication. <laughs> Everything I've discovered has come the hard way. I haven't had any funding from anyone. I'm almost 70, and I don't know what I'm going to do with the collection. So one problem I got. They're going to go back in the garage. I know it's worth a couple of million dollars, but my lifetime's notes, uh, 
preserved in hundreds of exercise books would be worthless in their eyes because I'm not a trained scientist. Uh, but being an amateur, I haven't got, got the ability, it seems, to, to observe and record things properly like a scientist. I beg to differ there. But the bulk of my collection, because I'm an amateur, would be destroyed. I've been told that. And that's part of my life. And without it, I don't have nothing to live for. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.